What's up, Liron here, and today I'm excited to try out this Chinese watercolor brush with you. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today I'm trying out this Chinese watercolor brush uh, with you. It says CC6 Yasumoto China. Uh, and it's a watercolor brush I picked up at Pat Catan's in Ohio. Um, by the way, this strap I have is supposed to improve my posture. Uh, I got it off of like an Instagram ad that I saw. Uh, and it's really interesting. It actually helps quite a bit. Um, so this brush, uh, I did play around with it like once. Uh, tried it out, tried a few things with it, seeing how it feels and what it what it looks like. And I think this is a good opportunity to do a similar thing where I just take a scrap piece of paper and try out many things, getting different brush strokes, getting um, different, working with the direction of the brush and against it, feeling the different variety of line weights that I can produce with this one. And this is usually how I get familiar, uh, get myself familiar with um, a, new, a new brush, any new brush that I get. So I do this brush stroke exercise and lots of things. I think it's a good opportunity to show you one, that, this way of learning about your new brushes, and two, just this particular one, which is very interesting. I'm actually really curious about trying to use it um, uh, on location because it does have a large variety of widths and line strengths and so on. Uh, what you see behind me is a thumbnail exercise, just like the video I did on thumbnail exercises. Um, Enjoy this one a lot and this one here is my favorite. I really like the way it turned out. All of these are beautiful but this one is my favorite definitely. Uh, so in any case I hope you enjoyed this video and let's get started. Okay so for me testing out a new brush like that is really one of the most I guess fun parts. There's zero um, let's say pressure or responsibility to produce anything. All I'm interested in is what the brush, uh, what results the brush can produce, okay, like its potential. So what I do is I dip it in my water bucket, which you can almost never see, so I'm just gonna show you. I actually saw this uh, bucket in a Steve Mitchell review with a Mijello bucket, and I really liked it, and I needed something with large quantity. It also has uh, this separation of wells, okay, you can see one, two, three. So that's good if you wanna separate your warms and cools. Uh, and that's it. So in any case, here's the, uh, the brush, uh, CC6 Yasumoto China. Um, and I'm just gonna start, and this is the perfect opportunity to use some of that excess paint that I have here on the palette that I'll probably, will not use for uh, anything really, unless there's a painting that matches it. And my first, let's say, experiment would be to just play around with it and see uh, how or what it feels like, okay? So trying out different brush strokes, testing out uh, the angles and how they affect the results. So you can see I get this um, very possibly a broken edge very easily by using the side of the brush, which is very a very common way uh, of getting that kind of a dry brush uh, effect. Um, so that's the kind of uh, thing I would do and I'll go crazy on this entire uh, paper. Uh, one of the things that I like to do the most is figure out the line strength that I can produce uh, or maybe let's say just the size uh, of, of the brush. So I'm gonna try and produce a few thin lines and see how thin I can get the lines to be. Uh, and this is really something you have to practice. I have to practice too, that's for sure. Just trying to do a few lines that are roughly parallel and seeing uh, the type of stroke I can produce here. So you can see this one relative to its size it can get quite thin uh, which I like. It wouldn't get as thin as my rigger brush for example. Let me show you because that's really a completely different story. So with that if I go I can produce a bit of thinner more controlled lines but for let's say more um, for looser works this could work really well. Now just for variety's sake I'm gonna grab some I don't know red or something that's a little different than this blue and just continue doing this little thing creating different uh, types of strokes and seeing uh, what I can produce with it and this is really a good way of um, starting uh, to work with a new brush. Uh, you kind of just experiment and see the, the variety of, of lines and shapes uh, it can produce 
Um, a lot of people are afraid to work against the natural direction of the brush and I actually embrace that. I think it's a great way to produce uh, an interesting texture. For example, if you want to do some trees or foliage, no better way than to go against the natural movement of the hair to get it in. I'm not the type of person who's scared uh, of hurting my brushes or my tools in general. Uh, everything will take a beating, the paper, the brush, the paint, I don't really care. Um, because I figured at some point that these tools are meant to serve me uh, and I shouldn't worry too much um, about these kinds of things especially if I want to produce uh, good results I guess um, so now what I'm gonna try and do is something a little different I'm gonna try and do some negative painting around uh, some areas like this so I'm painting an area but leaving a few gaps uh, in between uh, another good test that you could do uh, is try and figure out the, the how much water and paint it can hold. So if, if I, for example, just grab a bunch of, of the mixture here, and I'm just going to start making these lines. And now you can see I figured out an angle at which I can get it to be very thin. Um, so it really depends. And, and the brush does have a feeling of... It does have a natural inclination, so if I try to push it too much, it gets into uh, it kind of gets into a set shape. That's how I feel, at least. But you can see now that my lines are starting to get broken. Okay, so when they start to get broken, that means I kind of need to recharge it. I do have a lot of paint still to use here, uh, but I still need to start and recharge it. So. Uh, the water and paint capacity, that's one way of figuring that out, uh, really. Let's put a bit of yellow here, and this is my uh, all-time favorite um, nickel azo. So now it's a bit of a mix of both. And you can see how, let's use a bit of a pure mixture. This is just beautiful, really, and, and it's so fun because you don't need to worry about anything like getting a result or anything. You're just having fun with the brush. And I'm going to show you in just a moment what we're going to do is let this dry and then do another layer on top of all of this mess. Uh, and, and while it dries, I'm going to show you uh, what kind of an experiment I did in my sketchbook with this brush that actually ended up turning a few heads because a lot of people liked it and, and stopped because I let... Uh, uh, a lot of people see my sketchbooks, you know, friends and family and stuff like that. And this is the one thing they really liked for some reason. So uh, I do want to show you what that looks like. And then you can try and produce, you know, really wide lines. So this is something we haven't really tried yet. So you can see this can cover up uh, pretty large spaces. Okay, so now we have this big fat mess. Uh, I'm going to set this all aside, show you what I did the last time I played around with it. And then maybe we'll do a couple of glazing and, and see... Uh, what we can produce, okay? So funny enough, here's the very first experiment I did with this brush uh, and it's this tree kind of shape. Uh, now what I was doing while working on this is making sure the wash is really wet uh, and I just allowed everything to mingle together and try I tried to figure out what shape I can produce. Now this is my Concern Montval sketchbook so it's quite small. You generally need a larger paper to feel the full extent of the brush uh, but with this one, uh, it was just really fun and uh, all the paint bled uh, onto itself. There's lots of blossoms here, lots of cauliflowers, a um, bit of blue here if you can uh, notice that. And funny enough, you know, people flipping th through this sketchbook get to this page and they're like, whoa, that's so pretty. Uh, and, I'm and then I start question, I'm, I'm starting to interrogate them. Like, uh, if, you've, uh, if you see this in an art store, like a print, would you buy it? Starting to ask questions because I'm curious and I'm like, hmm, I can make this in like 10 minutes. So if that's what people want to buy, I can try and make that as well. Uh, so it was just an interesting experience. Uh, and hopefully you can see the intricacies of the paint. You have a bit of a bluish gray here. Then I added a bit more yellow. Here's a bit more red. A bit of blue bleeding in here and a bit of gray and muted color, sorry, here. Uh, so that was a really fun experiment. Uh, and what we're going to do next is, I think it's going to dry soon. And we can just glaze a, uh, another quick layer, I guess, seeing how wide the line can get. Maybe trying a few more exercises and wrap it up. Okay, so now it's all dried. And I don't want to do this demo too long. Uh, I want to keep this rather short, so I'm going to wrap it up soon. But I just want to test out the different uh, line weights that we can achieve with this one. 
So I'm just mixing up. You know what? Let's make this a little more of a pure color just so that we can better see it. And what I'm going to try and do is start thin, which is a good exercise in and of itself, and then go a little thicker and you can see the result, okay? So this is what you can, this is the type of uh, variety of line weights that you can achieve with this brush. So you can, and a good exercise is to go thick and then thin and then thick and then thin. You put more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure. Not an easy one, but, um, but it's just a good, like you don't expect results when doing this. You just expect to, um, practice basically really it's just about practice uh, we're not aiming for a perfect variation in line width uh, because that's really hard to get you know uh, and then when you encounter a similar situation with a painting you know what to do because you've already uh, practiced uh, with this particular scenario so you know that when you uh, push the brush th with this much strength it produces this thick of a line and so on and it's just a very helpful thing to have in mind so in any case, I think this is it. This is a good chance to uh, to wrap this up. I will do just some, you know, if I'm gonna use this paper just for experimentation, then uh, I'm gonna use it all the way to the end. This is how I save up on materials, by the way. I just practice like that. Uh, so you can do some dry brush, figure out the directions uh, to get the ideal uh, width. I'm, I can choose a bit of, I can mix a bit of a thicker paint and then we'll see the effect even better. I'm doing it a bit into wet now, but uh, in any case, you get the point. We completely obliterated this paper, uh, but still, uh, it was a good session and a good way of figuring out how to handle the brush. You could even put back in some water, uh, and then you'll get some uh, flowers and blossoms, okay? Cauliflowers of doom. Some people do that on purpose to get a certain effect, like cloudy sky, uh, and it can work really well. Uh, and in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this demo uh, and seeing what this brush is capable of. Uh, I really want to try it out outside uh, where it can shine due to its uh, large variety of, of different uh, widths and, you know, just different, um, I guess, results when it comes to brush strokes. Uh, so I will, I hope to show you more of this one in the future. And now we can wrap up this video. So this is it for today. We've created this big fat mess behind me. And this is how I like to test out uh, new brushes. And uh, this one's really nice. I don't know how long it'll last and how fine of a tip it will be able to preserve over the months and years. Uh, it's a very simple, again, bamboo structure, okay? And uh, with this nice little thing that you can hold it onto with. Um, but I'm gonna give it a shot and I'm gonna try using it outside on location. I think it's very, psychologically speaking, it helps you loosen up because it's just a very unique one. For me, at least, it has that effect. I don't know why. Um, but I see a lot of uh, other painters working with these kinds of brushes and I was really curious to try it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you saw on Instagram or here that you want me to dive deeper on and talk a bit more about, like the thumbnail exercise that I showed you, I got a few new books uh, as a gift from uh, Mary from Toronto. Thank you so much for sending me this one and another one by uh, Ed Whitney. So if you want to see some book flips th throughs, uh, book, book reviews, I forgot how to talk. Occasionally I forget how to. Um, so if you want to see any of that, let me know. I want to do more of what you enjoy. And uh, I do have in store some other painting processes, like full long uh, processes that, you, that hopefully you will benefit from. Okay, I'm trying to have a good balance of actual demos you know I see some channels that do purely just painting demos and that's great but for me uh, I don't want to do just that I want to share with you some other stuff so hopefully you enjoy everything and the whole package so thank you so much for watching I really really appreciate your attention and the nice comments that I get and the, the video likes that really help the video um, to uh, just reach more people uh, and one last note uh, the thumbnail exercise that I just showed you as well as this little thumbnail that I did on a separate uh, session so all of these I'm posting them on Instagram so, so be sure to check it out uh, my Instagram page has lots of work in progress and more live updates as you can see what I'm doing this very moment as opposed to this video that will be posted only a few days after recording so if you're more into that Definitely check it out. It's going to be at LeronianIL.com. It's going to be in the description box as well. Thank you so much. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.